All right, Cisco email security outbreak filters. All right, so low volume targeted threats can be difficult to detect. So if your anti-spam settings are set too high, you get false positives too low, the message squeaks in, right? So out outbreak fi filters gives us suspicious emails additional checks, right? So the whole idea is to hold the message long enough for us to see if there's new anti-spam rules that may arrive based on what we're seeing out in the wild. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a text resource, okay? And in this case, you can just add text resource, but I've already done that, okay? It's very simple to do. There's nothing really complex. I'm not skipping out here. Um, but you give it a name, you give it a type, and then you type in what it is that you wanna convey, whatever message you wanna convey to whatever you're gonna add the disclaimer to. So in this case, we're gonna say there's a warning, right? This message has been identified as possible uh, threat category, and now we're using a variable. That variable will be filled in with the threat category, right? Or a threat description in this case. And um, again, you can use the variables, and the variables are meant to be able to fill or insert that information that's gonna help allow the users to understand what might be happening, right? Again, pretty easy stuff. You create the text resource, uh, you would submit it uh, if it was a new one, and then you would commit that change. Um, in our case, it's already created, so we're good, right? But you would have to create it. So with that being said, we've got this text resource. Again, it's not being used, it's like an object until you actually go and apply it to some policy somewhere. So now we'll go to security services. We'll check, um, we'll come in here real quick and we'll check the settings. You can see global status is enabled, adaptive rule. You can see maximum uh, mess or size to scan. So you can also come in here and turn on something like web interaction tracking. So this we will talk about in future videos, but uh, if users are clicking on, uh, uh, URLs that we're rewriting, you may want to know that in order to educate them better, right? Because it seems that they're still acting in a manner that might uh, cause the organization risk, right? The behavior is not great. All right, so let's go into incoming uh, mail policies. And you can see here, there's the default policy, and that's the one we're using, right? You can customize this as you see fit, but you give it a name, right? The default's always there. Anti-spam, antivirus, advanced malware, gray mail, content filters, and then outbreak filters, right? And you can see here the quarantine threat level is set to one. Um, that's the lowest um, that you can set it. Again, you can tweak this or leave it at its default. Um, and here we could do message modification. So what we could do is, um, uh, we can enable the message modification and we can prepend the message subject to educate the user that this might be suspicious. If they do receive it, we're saying, you know what, I want to prepend this to give them an additional alert. Um, again, I might add that disclaimer and we will, right, in this case, that that might also add to the warning signs. So the user might think twice about clicking or opening something, right? So you can see uh, the threat disclaimers here, right? That's the one that we created. Now the object's actually gonna be leveraged in policy. And you can see there's some URL rewriting uh, that you could actually uh, do. There's some bypass domain scan scanning itself. Um, so there's a bunch of other tweaks in here that you could do, right? But if you preview the disclaimer, this is what it looks like in HTML. And then this is what it's gonna look like um, from a text perspective. I mean, pretty simple stuff, but the preview button's nice to be able to click and, and see what might uh, the user themselves might be seeing. All right, so we submit that. And again, because this is new a new change, we've got to commit the policy, right? Or commit the changes itself. Remember, nothing happens, right? It's, it's not being used or not being saved uh, until you commit that change. So we want to commit the changes. We want to give it a, a comment that's descriptive. All right, so like every other video, the goal here is to test it. 
Uh, we never had this feature enabled previously. So we'll go in, we'll, we'll connect to the console, whether this is cloud email or on-premise email security, we'll tail the mail logs so we can see uh, actually what happens when a message is sent. So from here, now that we've got that running, we can run into uh, the uh, sender and now we can create or craft the message and send it. So we're acting as Adam. He is an individual on the outside, so he's not part of the internal org itself. We're going to send it to Alan, which is an internal enterprise uh, or corporate user. We'll give it a subject name. We'll enter something in the body, right? We want to make it attractive, right? We want them to click it. And then what we'll do is we'll add an attachment. Goes browse. It's got to grab that file and we'll attach it and then we're off to the races. Perfect. All right, send that message. And hopefully the user is gonna click it, or will he, or her. So we're not seeing anything here. All right, so let's quickly go check what happened in their message logs. All right, so what we can do very quickly, you can, start from the top and work your way down, right? But basically what we're gonna see here is that um, the verdicts in most cases come back as negative or clean. And the only thing that's positive or saving us at this point is the outbreak filters. So we can see that it's positive. We can see what the, the uh, category is and we can also see what level or threat level and the attachment type. So we know that we've been able to successfully catch it with outbreak filters. And we also know that it's been quarantined to outbreak. So now what we can do is we can go and view that message, right? Because now it's being held, it didn't get to the user, everything's good. Um, now as an analyst, maybe now you wanna review it, right? Um, and uh, make a decision on that message itself. So let's go to policy, virus and outbreak quarantine. And we can see outbreak here, and you can see one message is actually being held. And when we click that, we get a good idea. There's the sender, the recipient, the subject, received. Um, but what we're gonna do is jump into message tracking. Message tracking is amazing. When you're trying to search for something very specific, you can see there's a tremendous amount of categories. You can do a base and SHA-256, sorry, message event types, right? It's lots of ways of parsing the data, but very quickly we were able to pivot and it, it filtered for us. And now we can see that message here. So what we'll wanna do is go and show details. And again, it, the idea here, you already know what took place uh, on the, the command line itself, but what we're gonna do is show you here what it actually looks like in the GUI itself. So you can see here again, very much the same, right? negative, clean, right? And there's our message from outbreak filters, right? Again, threat level, attachment type. And then, uh, you know, we've already seen in that nice bold yellow that it's actually been quarantined as well.
So far, pretty easy, right? It, it's, it takes longer to explain it than it is to go in and turn it on. Okay, so from here, what we're probably going to do is let's release the message and let's see what it would look like if the user themselves would have received it. So we'll go back to quarantine. Release that mail message. And let the party begin. Let's do a quick send receive. There's the message. We can see it's prepended with suspicious message. Um, here's the um, the warning message, right? And you can see the actual insertion of the variable viral attachment, right? So again, it's pretty easy um, to set up. I, I, we're adding additional layer of protection. At the end of the day, um, you know what we want to do is ensure that users are clicking, so we have to move th further down the security stack to prevent it. Right? We want to get this as far away from the user as possible, and email is one of those mechanisms that allows us to do that. And outbreak filters gives us another check uh, that um, that we may have otherwise missed. So pretty cool stuff, and and again, pretty easy.